Hello, my name is Rick from Solarcrest Distribution in Macclesfield. We specialise in installing um, MVHR systems. This particular system here is uh, Aventaxia B+, Sentinel B+. It is one of the best machines on the market for domestic purposes. I'd just like, you, like to talk you through a, a typical install. Here we're, at, we're on a job, typical stage at first fix. What we need is a finished wall. So what we've, what we've got to work with here is um, a sheet of 18mm ply which has been fixed to the wall with concrete fixings. Because we need to have really decent fixings to support all this kit. So the, uh, the client allowed us to put this on and we painted it white so um, it's, it's done prior to the install. Obviously some of this can be touched up at a later date. So let's start with the unit itself. On this job we're going to have a washing machine and tumble dryer underneath. So we want to get some height on the machine. And one of the best things to do is to try to get these which are called distribution manifolds. These are what um, send the air via these small pipes up to the rooms. As you can see up there we have got uh, a typical what is called a plenum. And these via these 75mm ducts connect into the manifolds. <coughs> okay, so let's just get back to this Ventaxia machine here. These ducts on the right hand side here are going to atmosphere and it's very important that these, that these are insulated. This is a special duct in here which is uh, manufactured by a company called Newbeak. It's pre-insulated and uh, it doesn't have any condensation problems. It's very important that those pipes are insulated. No end of problems happen if they're left uninsulated. So that's very important. And the shorter these runs are to atmosphere, the better. We like to use a minimum of three fittings um, and that gives us the best sort of airflow. If you have multiple fittings, it adds to the resistance and therefore the machine's got to work harder. So let's try to limit ourselves to three fittings. As you can see at the back there, we have the exhaust. Unfortunately, this consists of uh, this of quite a long run. The longer the runs are, the less performance. But it's also important that there is a constant fall back to the machine or there is a fall to atmosphere. It's uh, a, a real no-no to have U-bends in the system because that's where water can collect and, and cause quite serious problems. So remember that, a direct fall all the way to the machine or falling to outside, that's critical. These uh, manifolds here, I like to see them as close to the machine as possible, again for efficiency and performance. If we can put a piece of ducting between the unit and the manifolds around about 200 millimetres, that is going to be best because at some stage of commissioning we're going to have to put a probe in here to measure the airflow. So a 200 mil length of ducting is ideal. Sometimes we can't get these, these manifolds near to the machine, but the nearer the better. Just as a temporary measure we've had to fix these manifolds with some tie band the client is going to create some kind of uh, boxing in system around this manifold and these ducts here. Okay, this uh, again underneath the machine we have got a condensate drain which uh, eventually will be tapped into the soil to the soil system and it's very important that this pipe is, is piped internally that it doesn't run to the outside. This trap is very important as well because air is pulled up this pipe via the machine and this trap stops foul smells from the foul drain being pulled up and also allows water to pass through when the machine is idling and eventually that will just pass through to the drain. So this trap here is, is critical, you must never forget that. And this pipe, the dimension of this pipe is 22mm overflow and what comes out at this side is 32mm pipe which we'd like to see the plumbers connect into the soil stack via strap on boss. There is a, a control panel on here and on this particular, in, in this particular application the client doesn't want the additional control. We do have a, a data cable which connects into the system under here which duplicates this control and we can have it elsewhere um, on the job. Usually these are put in a roof space so we have to have a, 
another controller which is put somewhere either in a kitchen or a, a plant room or somewhere accessible that the client can see what's going on and for ease of commissioning too. Okay, uh, what's next? Right, let's get back to these, these ducts on the, the manifold side. So you can see here all these ports. And on this particular job, we're using, we're using 10 ports. And these pipes all connect in. This particular, this duct in here has a real slick lining inside it, which allows the air to pass through nicely. And when we put the, the ceiling rings on, they go on one, two, three, on the third notch down and then they push into the manifold. I would like to show us uh, a neat little trick which we've developed and this saves no end of problems. This is called silicon spray. Quite often when we first started putting these in we were spitting on these to try to lubricate them to put them in but what happens is your spit dries up and then your mouth dries up. So get some of this silicon spray, it's, it saves a lot of, a lot of hassle. You try to push this in without it, it can be quite difficult and the seals can get, you see there what happens is the seals can, can come undone and not create a proper airtight seal. So if we get the, the silicon spray and we spray around in there and we put this in, that's just a, a nice perfect fit straight in. And what can happen is, if, if there is a twist in these pipes further down the system, eventually the twist will come out. And if you don't put this lubricant in, what happens is the pipe can twist and can actually twist out these spigots. And if this is in a, in a situation where it's buried in a wall which cannot be accessed, we've got serious problems. So this silicon spray is a, is a, real, is a real godsend. So let us buy it. It's only a few pounds, just and it'll last probably about 15 jobs so uh, remember to use that and also we can use it up there on the on the plenum side when we're pushing the pipes in because we can have the same problem happening up there on this particular job we, we've got all the extract pipes in as you can see they're all nice and neat uh, fanning out into the building this afternoon we're going to be putting in the, the supply side okay a good thing to remember is on the Sentinel B plus, the back left hand side is always the extract. That's how I remember things. The way that we dump the atmosphere to outside doesn't really matter. It does within on some jobs, but as long as um, they're about a metre apart, that's the most important thing. And they're above head and they can be above head height. Alright, so let's just pop that in there. Okay, now to the electrics. We've had some um, conflicting, confusing things happen with regards to sparks. Now this, this unit comes with a four core cable, but what I've done here, I've snipped off the black cable, which is the switch live. The Sentinel B Plus has an internal humidity sensor, so we don't have to have um, boost switches, which usually are a momentary switch next to a light switch. So we've eliminated the need for those with the humidity sensor. So to stop confusion, I recommend that we snip off the black cable. So when the spark comes to wire this up at some stage, he doesn't wire it in. I've had instances where the boost is permanently running um, because the spark hasn't known what to do with that cable and he's just created a link and the system is running in boost. So um, I snipped it off, but, it, it, but some people might just want to uh, just tape it up or put a, a blank connector on it. If it's snipped off, no live gets to it, it's not doing anything. So uh, this must go into um, a switched fuse spur and it only requires a 3 amp fuse. These systems use next to nothing. When they're idling in the evening they might only use 40 watts. At maximum they'll use about 130 watts. But these, these machines here, very rarely they will exceed 60% um, of its uh, fan speed in a typical domestic application like this. We always overside the machines because um, the bigger the machine, the less the, the quieter it will be. If you can imagine a motorbike, which is a, a 50cc Vespa, if it's running at full pelt, it sounds horrendous and is really, really loud. It'll sound like an air dryer going off. I consider these to be like your Harley Davidson. When they are just purring along at uh, 20 mile an hour, you'll barely, you'll barely hear the engine, you'll barely hear the motor. So um, we always over-spec, and it's better for the efficiency of the entire system. So, 
Um, those, that's a few tips on installs. Uh, this is nice and compact and a nice, neat looking job. And uh, that's how we like to do it at Solar Crest. So, thank you for watching. Goodbye.